Hi everyone, it's Alyssa from the Township Library and I'm here for another edition of Teen Reads. I have three pretty new books for you today. Uh, two graphic novels and one memoir. Alright, so let's get started. I'm going to start with the memoir. We have a few books by this author in the teen room right now and this is a perfect book to read and have on your list for November, which is Native American Heritage Month. This is by author Eric Gansworth, and this is Apple Skin to the Core. Uh, let's take a look and read the little flap. The term apple is a slur in Native communities across the country. It's for someone supposedly red on the outside, white on the inside. Eric Gansworth is telling his story in Apple Skin to the Core, the story of his family of Onondaga among Tuscaroras of native folks everywhere, from the horrible legacy of the government boarding schools to a boy watching his siblings leave and return and leave again, to a young man fighting to be an artist who straddles two worlds. Eric shatters that slur and reclaims it in verse and prose and imagery that truly lives up to the word heartbreaking. So this is a memoir in verse. There's also some prose. There is, um, there are sections of his art, his drawings, and if you go on to his website, which is just his name.com, I believe. Right? Hang on, I saw it in here. I think it's in his, uh, his note here at the end. He has a really nice, uh, note. Yeah, ericgansworth.com. Uh, he talks about the art. So it's a little bit of, of an art project that went along with this, so more of his art is on his website if you decide you're interested in it. Um, and there's a little bit of a theme to some of it in The Beatles. If you're familiar with the works of The Beatles, he grew up in, in the time that they were big and started to uh, blow up on the scene and then when they started to evolve and change when they went solo um, and so there's actually some theming to the Beatles and um, the Apple records as well so I thought that was really cool so this is really his story and it's his ancestors story and it's it's the story of all of them and how basically what he describes as genocide, how his ancestors had to go to schools where their culture would be erased and maybe some of them didn't make it back because of diseases that were introduced to them that were not on their land or part of their culture. And then he describes just the erasing of culture, of language, of memories, he talks about his family and where they have been and what they have gone through, and for him what it was like to go to school, to go to college, to find and get opportunities, and what it was like growing up without the means for everything that he not just wanted but needed, food, clothes, what it felt like. And... Um, I read a review of this that I think sums it up better than I could, and that review said that this book was not always written for every audience. It was also written for people who have gone through these experiences, people from other cultures who, or, or especially indigenous people, to understand that you're not alone. And that's why these books are so wonderful when when you look for authors from diverse backgrounds who have a real story to tell. Because as somebody who has not gone through that, I realize what what he has gone through. But I can never never fathom it and I can never put myself in those shoes. But I need to hear about it. And for others who have ancestors or families, whether they're indigenous or come from other countries where genocide is a thing that has happened, maybe is still happening, they can read this book as well and say, I understand how that feels. I understand that. My grandparents understand that. That's part of our history too. This book was really written for such a broad audience. Um, and like I said, we do have some of his other books. They're fiction books. Um, if, I ever, if I ever get out of here and give me some truth. So you may want to check out his fiction as well. I always love to have a diverse collection. And so these books are uh, a really big part of my collection and what I'm looking for. And I hope what you are all looking for as well. So that is Apple Skin to the Core. Alright, the next graphic novel that I have, I'm trying to figure out which one I want to do next. Um, I'm going to go with Jonathan Hill's Odessa. 
All right, so here's here's Odessa, and it's it's got a very limited color palette. This is the color palette of the story. Let's see. Eight years ago, an earthquake, the big one, hit the Cascadia Fault Line, toppling cities and changing landscapes all up and down the west coast of the United States. Life as we know it changed forever. But for Vietnamese-American Virginia Crane, life changed shortly after the earthquake and when her mother left and never came back. Ginny has gotten used to a life without her mother, helping her father take care of her two younger brothers, Wes and Harry, but when a mysterious package arrives for her 17th birthday, her life is shaken up yet again. For the first time, Ginny wants something more than to just survive, and it might be a selfish desire, but she's determined to find out what happened to her mother, even if it means leaving her family behind. Um, so... You see her take that journey. I don't want to spoil what happens, but there are others who come on the journey. There are people that they meet. And and at first, you kind of feel like, what's, what's happening? Almost nothing is happening. They're just progressing. And then they're not progressing. And then they're progressing. And they're not progressing. And, you know, it kind of feels like a bunch of lucky circumstances. It feels as if Virginia herself is not actually doing anything to get where she is. She has some helpers along the way, um, but as we near the last part of the graphic novel, you start to become much more invested in it. And it, you don't want to read a book and feel like you're not invested in it, but as a graphic novel, it has a good pace, it has a good style, I really love the artwork, and I'm genuinely curious about the story. And once some of the action starts to pick up, you barrel towards the end and you need to know what happens and you realize that you're running out of pages and you don't understand how it's going to resolve and then you get to the end and you see wait for it to be continued there is currently no date in mind for the publishing of the second Odessa novel. Uh, I went and looked it up and I don't see any news about it as of yet, but this one also just came out um, a couple weeks ago, I want to say. So, yeah, just a week ago, actually. <laughs> a week or, yeah, a week or so. I just processed it this week is what I'm trying to say. So, I don't know when the next one's going to come out. You're going to have to wait to find out what happens. I'm going to have to wait to find out what happens. But I think that the draw of the post-apocalyptic world is very intriguing. Uh, the story about family, some of the humor of the people who join her, um, you know, there is some slight humor, there are some glimmers of hope, and it is a fun journey, and you just have to let yourself sink into the journey. So that is Odessa. That's going to be on our graphic novel section. You can always let us know if you're looking for a graphic novel like that or any others. And then my last book for today is one other graphic novel that um, the... the uh, tagline, as reviewed by another author, says this book will save lives, and I agree. This this definitely struck me, um, and I think it will hit for a lot of people as well. This is called Flamer by Mike Carrado. Um, it's the summer between middle school and high school, and Aiden Navarro is away at camp. Everyone's going through changes, but for Aiden, the stakes feel higher. As he navigates friendships, deals with bullies, and spends time with Elias, a boy he can't stop thinking about, he finds himself on a path of self-discovery and acceptance. Um, Mike Curato was also himself an Eagle Scout and draws on his own experiences in, the, in his debut graphic novel, telling a difficult story with humor, humor compassion, and love. Um, so I will say that there, I don't think there is, I know a lot of books lately are starting to have some trigger warnings in them. Uh, this doesn't have a trigger warning, but just know that there is some, um, racism, homophobia, mention of, um, attempted or uh, thoughts of suicide but uh, and then also some some slurs related to homophobia and the way that it's handled though is done really well um, because this is an ex 
experience because it is um, a narrative and because when you hear some of those things, first of all, there's almost always somebody who stands up for our character Aiden and says to the bullies, why are you saying that? That's not okay. So when you hear these volatile words and you're shocked and upset by it, there's somebody nearby who's also shocked and upset by it. Um, but this also takes place in 1995 and um, things were different back then. And I know I... I don't like to think of 1995 as a long time ago, but things have changed so much. And even, but then even though things have changed so much, this book was written because somebody may be going through similar experiences. And there are resources at the back for those um, who just need a little support, uh, mental health support, or if you are LGBTQ and you need a little support, you need a little help coming out or dealing with your emotions or just finding... Uh, your voice. There are some resources in the back here, and there's a really nice author's note as well. It's a complete package. Um, the art is really cool. It, it They look like just kind of um, easy, almost like thick pencil drawings. Like these, these uh, drawings are pretty basic, but also throughout the book there are punches of oranges and reds used for emphasis. For moments of intensity, for moments of terror, for um, moments of danger, and I think that that was done very effectively. I think that Mike Curato did a really good job with the color palette and the art and the story as a whole. And I think that at the end of this book, you know, you don't know how Aiden is going to fare in life, but you know that there's so much more hope. And you know that there's good in other people, and you know that you just need to trust in yourself and being yourself. And I think that this is a really good one. And whether you yourself are um, wondering if your friends are going to accept you, whether because of your culture, your race, uh, your orientation, your gender, Whatever that is, it's really nice to read. Um, it is upsetting at times when you think that, you know, is anybody going to be there for Aiden? But it is really comforting to see how uh, the people around him want to be there for him and support him. And um, I just think that, you know, like I said, whether, whether that's you or maybe you know somebody who's going through that or maybe you don't have any experience with that and you need to understand what that's like. This is a great graphic novel for it. Um, I really enjoyed it, and I really think that it's like it's an important one, and I'm glad that we have it in our collection. So again, this is uh, one of our graphic novels, so um, you can check that out. You can request it on bccls.org. And those are our three books for today. Uh, Flamer, Odessa, and Apple, Skin to the Core. Um, those are all going to be available for checkout for curbside pickup in our teen room. You can give us a call, send me an email. My email is on the front page of our website. Um, and of course, if you're looking for other books, maybe these don't quite hit the mark or you want one of these and something else, we have that book match form on the top of our webpage on all of the pages. You can fill that out. Let me know your likes and dislikes, books that you've liked or hated, and I can help find another book for you. But uh, that is it for me for today, and I'm going to let these three books that I read over the past couple of weeks just sit in my heart and my head and think about them and think about the experiences of others most of all. Remember that books are our windows and mirrors, and I think that um, especially Apple and Flamer are really great examples of windows and mirrors in our literature so that we can better understand those around us and those who have had similar experiences to us. And I also think that they're really helpful. Remember, a book may save a life, just like they say on the liner notes for this one. All right, that is it, everyone. I hope you enjoyed the rest of your afternoon. I will see you all next time. Bye.